And now on Nights with Steve Price, the Courses and Career Show with Danny Bielek. Thanks to Management Consultancy International. Go to mci.edu.au. Danny's in the studio with me. Great to see you again. Good to see you, Steve. Um, we obviously been talking a lot with Andrew and taking a stack of calls about these comments that the Treasurer Joe Hockey made yesterday. Mm. I think it's a massive beat up yep. where they're criticising what he said. But the core of what he's talking about is a really fascinating conversation. Mm. How do the people of Sydney who want to live and work in Sydney uh, manage to buy themselves property? Yep. Well, it's very difficult. Yep. The Treasurer was saying you've got to get a good job that you're going to have for a long time that earns you a good income. Yep. Well, I don't think there's any surprise in that. Nothing new either. But uh, it, it raises the whole debate and question about the portability of work yep. and, and whether Australians in the future, particularly those that have been born and grow up in Sydney, are going to have to, to realise that they're going to have to move if they want a decent lifestyle with their job. Yeah, well, that's exactly right, Stephen. Let me just put put this into a little bit of perspective. I pulled some figures from 100 years ago here. Um, 100 years ago in Australia, so this is nationwide, we're not just talking about Sydney. In Australia... So we're the, talking 1915. Yep, a median house price was $6,156, while the average wage was $577. Um, per year. year. The average wage was for a 58-hour average week, Steve. So we're talking about a 10 multiple, all right? So we're not talking about the five or six, you know, odd multiple that we're talking about of average weekly earnings. We're talking about it being infinitely more unaffordable um, back then. Look, Steve, it's always been hard um, to to live in a place that's very successful. It's always been hard to buy a property. And I think in, in this consumer society that we live in now, and I think it's become far more consumerist in the last 20 years, there's an expectation that I can just pull out my credit card and I can just have what I want today. Once upon a time, you used to go to David Jones and you'd say, I want to buy that video recorder. I did it when I was 18 years old. They said, no worries, let's go on a plan. And every week I'd go in and I'd throw in 50 bucks or whatever it was, and in a couple of months' time, I went and I collected it from them. Nobody does that anymore. It used to be called lay-by, you remember? You're listening to The Courses and Career Show with Danny Bielek. Thanks to Management Consultancy International. Go to mci.edu.au. Danny's with us. Back to your calls in a moment. The other thing about portability of jobs and mm. relocation and decentralising, mm. I think the Commonwealth Bank's about to move part of its operation out to Parramatta. Mm. Uh, the banks have moved out to Homebush. It's cheaper real estate for big business. Yep. Well, why do you need to be in the middle of the city? It depends what you do. You absolutely don't. Look, there's it's it, it's beneficial sometimes just to be able to go building. and scoot over to see a business partner or something like that. The yeah. reality is, Steve, um, that a lot of businesses like the Commonwealth Bank moving out to places like Parramatta um, is, is a big vote of confidence in those areas and it does create jobs well, and it means you can live in St Mary's, you can live in Penrith, you can live in... in we could relocate to Jubita Wagga. What would be the what, what would be the problem? Might be a bit of a commute for me, but that's all right. I don't, I don't mind. Well, I, don't no, mind. I think could, Wagga's beautiful. You could just ring me up. But, I mean, the point is you could do this operation. Correct. Uh, well, we're in not terms in the city of the CBD, We're in Piermont. You know, the sales guys might need to be here to go around the city and sell stuff, but yep. the broadcasters, we could all buy houses in Wagga and go and live there. And in fact, you'd probably be closer to your panel operators, your producers, your technicians, all of those sorts of guys. Yeah, all living in the same, it'd take you 10 minutes to get to work. Absolutely. You know, there would be people who work in this building uh, who would have to travel an hour to get to work every day. But the, the big question really, I suppose, for people who are... Um, looking for a home to live in and looking for work as a way to get there is how will I ever be able to afford it? And they look at the Sydney house price and they go, oh my God, you know, my parents afforded a place, my grandparents afforded a place, I can't. Sydney is bigger than when your parents bought a place. Sydney is much bigger than when your grandparents yeah. bought a place. The beautiful part about the way that we do things in Australia now, and I don't think people really appreciate this, I'm going to talk it up because I always do. We have something in Australia called the Australian Qualifications Framework. If you studied anything in Australia, it is recognised around the country. There are a couple of min minor exceptions that are being worked through, like hairdressing I think is still a problem. But the bottom line is that unlike it was in the past, if you grew up in Sydney and you did a qualification in Sydney or you've worked as something in Sydney, you want a house, there are places like Adelaide. There are places, Steve, like the Central Coast, like Goulburn, like Penrith, Camden, 
you know, Wagga. I mean, there's a million places around Australia where a house is affordable. As David sells, Shell Harbour. Shell Harbour is not a second option. Shell Harbour is stunning. One of the things we should put into this is a debate, given we're talking about jobs too, that, I mean, it is a fact that wages in Sydney are higher mm-hmm. to a degree That's to right. compensate with the That's cost right. of living here. Steve, hello. Oh, g'day, Steve. G'day, Danny. I just wanted to say on the infrastructure issue, um, I live on the Central Coast, <clears throat> one thing they need to do is you can't catch a train um, because there's no car parks. At the right. stations? At, at stations. Really? And really. If if I hit Gosford Station, if you're not there by 7 o'clock in the morning, good luck getting a park. Everywhere around it is um, two-hour parking. Yep. yep. So what they need to do, the government's already owned the train lines, right? Why don't they build them above the train line, have free parking... Get people. That's exactly Gosford. what they need to do. They do it in Japan. Get get people from Gosford and Woi Woi and Penrith and Don't the Blue Mountains. And you know what? All of a sudden, it's not a drama anymore. It's you a very go. good idea. They own the air above the railway line. Just whack up a ten-story car park. Why not? Why not? And make it free. Yep. And <clears throat> you know what will happen? <clears throat> more and more people will catch a train. You won't have derelicts on it because um, <laughs> you know there's all the people leaving the city at you know. Six, seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. You're not catching the train on your own, um, and then bang your car's there, and you, you, you're home. And it's environmentally brilliant. And I just can't understand how neither government, and I'm not blaming liberals.